guys and welcome back to my channel i'm vanessa lopez and today i'm gonna be talking about or telling you guys how i found out i had stage 3 colorectal cancer at 27 years old just on a side note if my eyelashes are falling off or my makeup doesn't look too good today it's because i already went to a soccer game i went i took my daughter to the mall to try to find a dress um yeah i've been all over this place and my makeup has uh, been through some stuff some masks anyways getting back to the story um i just want to first start off by saying that i am not making this video for anybody to feel bad for me or i don't know i'm just making this video because i got a lot a lot of questions like i get this question every single day was what were my symptoms how did i find out what happened what did i do what was the first thing i did um so many questions that i'm hopefully gonna answer in this video like i said i don't want anybody to like be like oh like you just want attention or anything like that that's not what i'm looking for what i'm trying to do is just spread awareness to anybody who has quite anybody who has questions about it a disclaimer it might be a little tmi but this video is going to be talking about stools and blood and all of that so just letting y'all know so let me first start off this video by saying the symptoms that i had the first couple of symptoms that i remembered actually for a long period of time and i say that a long period of time because a lot of the doctors said that this cancer was a very slow growing cancer and when they found it i was only 27 years old and it was already stage three the first symptoms that i noticed um, that i actually thought about it over the years that whenever i ate anything i mean it could be anything it doesn't matter what i ate my stomach would always hurt like anything i ate would feel like if um like if you ate something bad or it didn't sit well with you um and it just felt like cramping and I immediately would have to go to the bathroom. And aside from me having to go to the bathroom a lot, obviously was a lot of cramping. Um, and then another feeling of just being really bloated. And I do remember um, having like a really sharp pain, it, but it was like a different pain that I noticed that after surgery, I haven't, after they removed my, um, my mask, that I haven't had that kind of pain, which was like a really like, sharp like a stabbing pain like out of nowhere it would it would be so painful to the point like i would sweat so i would um have to go to the bathroom within 10 to 15 minutes after that sharp pain and then i also notice sometimes with my stools um i would have a like an urge of like wanting to go to the bathroom and like not really much would come out but i would sometimes notice like it's gonna be really gross i'm sorry guys um, but it's like mucus, like if you were to blow your nose and it was very um, mucus looking, it wouldn't be clear or green, obviously. It would be a little bit like brown. Um, so maybe that's what I'm like, what? what is this? It was like just like mucus. It was gross. Um, so I did notice that too, which they kind of told me that the mucus came from like discharge from the tumor itself like tried to heal it i don't know but that's kind of what they told me was that it was kind of like discharged from the mass itself and so aside from the because the main symptom that i noticed which i took action right away was bleeding i had really heavy bleeding i don't mean like just a little bit when you wipe no it was like full-blown to the point where I would go to the bathroom and that's all it was. It literally looked like paint inside the toilet. So those were my symptoms and now I'm going to talk about how I found out that I had it. How it all went down. This all mostly started in 2020. Of course. I talked about another video that I lost my mom June 4th, 2020 to esophageal cancer around September. The beginning of september i was at a point in my life where i just did not feel good i felt tired all the time and i also have a blood disorder called hereditary 
spherocytosis, which makes my eyes and my skin a little yellow, which I get that question also a lot. But I, I already have a video on my blood disorder and me being yellow is normal for me. Being tired is normal for me. So I didn't really pay much attention to me being tired or yellow because that's pretty normal for me. It was It's weird. I just had a gut feeling that something was not right. So I went to my primary care at the beginning of September. He legit asked me like, do you think that it's cancer? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I was like, this is why I'm here. So he kind of like, you know, was like, I don't think so, but we'll, we'll do scans just in case. By, before he even could schedule me for scans, I already had all the bleeding and this was at the end of September. Um, and then one day at work, I just was bleeding a lot. I texted my um, husband and I told him about, you know, and I sent him a picture. He's He was like, that is definitely not normal. You need to go to the hospital immediately. So that night I called out of work and I went to the emergency room they did like a, I think they did a CT scan. All they could say was there was something there, but they couldn't tell me exactly what it was. They What they told me was that it could be inflammation and that's probably the reason why I'm bleeding, which I did not believe them at all. I never saw a doctor. I only saw the nurse practitioner and she did a rectal exam to test if there was blood. Well, she did a, an occult blood test and it came back positive, like, right away and I kept pushing and pushing for them to tell me why am I bleeding so much like I want to know I don't want to just go home and then for it to get worse or for something to happen to me and they didn't want to do anything I know that the nurse practitioner really tried to get the doctor to come see me or to come talk to me but I wasn't in emergency um so to me it was but obviously I gotta understand that, you know, people go to the emergency room because they're dying or because, you know, they got in a really bad accident or whatever the case may be um, that could be more urgent than mine. They let me go and I called my um, gastroenterologist right away. The ER trip really put into perspective that I was gonna have to push to be my own advocate against healthcare workers, which is crazy to say but this was not gonna be easy to be diagnosed. And I had a fight for myself and I had a fight for my health and I had a fight against nurses and doctors thinking, telling me that pretty much I'm crazy uh, cause I'm too young to have cancer. It can happen to anybody. Sadly, cancer does not discriminate. So I fought for my, I fought, I fought back. And right away I called my uh, gastroenterologist and I told him about it. And he scheduled me right away um, within, not even not even within a week, like within a couple of days. I remember I had to get prepped for colonoscopy. I don't think I ever want to drink blue Powerade because I had to drink Miralax, <laughs> a whole bottle of Miralax. So I got prepped for colonoscopy. I remember as soon as I woke up, the doctor was there waiting for me and David was there and he was explaining to both of us that they found a large, large mass, seven to 10 centimeters inside my rectum, which was in the rectosigmoid area. He took some biopsies, but he couldn't get good biopsies, like perfect good samples because it was so dense and he didn't want to cut anything too much or cause any damage to the tumor. Um, for it to you know spread or anything so he took some biopsies i used to work in a lab and i actually had my own lab director she was the one that had to relay the information to my doctor and to me it's especially hard for them i think to give me that news and they knew me i remember i was not in the right state of mind that i remember when i i i saw the the number from the facility and I right away I grabbed a, a note a notepad and a pen and I was okay I'm ready like give me the information and I was just I remember writing down just stuff and I was kind of like in my mind at the same time I was like no no I can't I know 
no, this is not real. No, I'm just waiting for them to say, no, there's nothing there. But no, that was not the case. So when they had told me on October 7th of 2020 that I had cancer at that point, they knew it was cancer, but they didn't know what stage it was. And that took forever to figure out. I had to go get uh, like PET scans to see like how far it, you know, if it's all over my body, if it's just localized. And we didn't, we didn't know at the beginning that it was localized, but they didn't know how far it had grown into my intestine or, and then another thing was the big issue was that my tumor where it was located at so my mass was pushing up against my uterus it wasn't towards the back of my intestine so it was like centimeters away from my uterus and so that was a big issue of what stage i was and it possibly was in a lymph node um so i had to get an ultrasound colonoscopy which they put the ultrasound probe rectally and they measure with the ultrasound inside how far it had came out of the walls or if it was in the uterus or anything like that and no it wasn't it did break through all of the layers of the intestine that is how i found out that i had cancer so yeah that's the scariest thing i have ever had to go through and it was like right before the holidays so the last year's holidays were like really heavy for us and this year's holidays was like i didn't know if i was gonna be here or not so i feel like i enjoyed it a lot more than i used to my world was turned upside down sideways i couldn't believe it i still to this day can't believe what i went through yeah, I don't see myself as a, like a strong warrior or like a hero or anything like that at all. I just, I didn't have a choice but to go through what I have to go through and really didn't want to, but I had to. I had no, no again, I had no choice but other than to go through it. I was just like, I just have to... Let me just get through this and hopefully I'll put it in my behind me. So all I have to say is that if you feel like something is wrong, I'm not saying it is going to be wrong, but I feel like until they say, oh, it could, be, it's nothing, it's nothing. I rather be proved that I am wrong than to be sorry later. Um, so if you guys have a feeling like something is wrong, I just want to be proved. I just want to know for a fact I am okay. Get your colonoscopies done. Get your mammograms done. Get your blood work done. Get your scans done. Get whatever tests you need to be done. Just please don't push it off. Don't push it off. I tried my best not to push it off and it almost got pushed out a year. Almost a year, yeah. 10 months. It was pushed out 10 months because of COVID. I'm glad and I'm so happy that I found it when we did. I really wish I would have found it earlier. You know, I understand people get super busy with work, with, you know, your kids, your homework, school, whatever the case may be, you guys can get really, really busy, but really take time for yourself. Take time to take care of yourself. I hate to say this, but companies will get rid of you as soon as they can. Um, never be a company person to the point where you put your health at risk. I really strongly feel that your health is more important than any job out there. Take care of yourself for your kids. Take care of yourself for you. And I think I'm done with the video. I think that's all of it of how exactly I found out that I had cancer. Um, if you guys want to know about any other videos like my treatment plan or, you know, how just I don't know just give me any ideas if you guys have any questions please let me know in the comments down below and that's it i love you guys all and i hope you guys are happy and healthy have a wonderful wonderful day i would love and appreciate if you guys really like this video and subscribe to my channel for support and hit that bell notification for any other uh, videos that i post and that is it for today bye